Mike's Daily Podcast. F -F episode 950, just 50 away from a thousand. That's wow. I'm speechless. Wow, shit's wow. I don't know what what I'm gonna do at a thousand. Uh, the Macarena. Exactly. Cafe anyways where we are. Mike Matthews. Uh, that's Haley joining me. And Haley's drinking a big cup. Mike's Daily Podcast. There's something in the cup. I want to point that out. Really? Yes. And on the outside it says, Wake up, America, once again. Oh. Mike's Daily Podcast. Here is my song that's me in the corner. <laughs> that's not the song I'm going to sing. Light. Losing my religion. See, it works that far. <laughs> uh, I love getting memo emails from everyone, including males and females. No, not really. Mike's Daily Podcast. But th that's me in the corner. It, it works again. That's me. That's in me in the spot. Light. Light. Podcast. Yes, you, you're being my religion. Yeah, you haven't quite got the little, almost, <laughs> but that's close enough. Hey, uh, uh, Haley got to hear me bitch about me getting memo emails. Oh, today. you said a bad word, bitch. Yeah, but it's a female dog. I, I meant it in the f contents context of female dogging. Female dogging. <laughs> I was female dogging about this uh, horrible thing we get in life in all around the world, all around the world, called memo emails. Memo emails. Oh. And, and they're the ones where they're being sent to several different participants when you know it was one specific participant. I didn't get the memo. But if I got it, if it was sent to me, that means I was responsible. So I am responsible for it. That's like me getting an email memo about the whole, uh, what was that, the Valdez that crashed and spilt oil all over Alaska? I always thought that was your fault. No, I, I, was, I was still in college. Did you know that it was Alaska Day on Sunday? Now I'm what? just going back in time. What? That's that. Exists. Canada had their elections. Canada had their elections. The uh, liberals won. The liberals won. Apparently, just barely. Trudeau is like two years younger than me. Yeah. Hey, so there's a Facebook page for the uh, the conservative guy, Stephen uh, Stephen Harper. I'm about to sneeze. That's why I'm making this face. Okay. And it had like oh. 250,000 likes. And there was also a Facebook group page called the Going Away Party for Stephen Harper. <laughs> and it had like 3 million likes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. How did you how do you find all this fascinating information, Haley? I saw those on screenshots. Someone was pointing it out and laughing. Oh, okay. Yes, the uh, the wonders of Tumblr. Tumblr's we're on that. Yeah. Yeah, Mike's Daily Podcast is on Tumblr. I'm also on Tumblr. I yeah. dare you to find me. At dare you to find me dot tumblr dot com? At dare you to find me dot tumblr dot com. That's not really what it is, is it? No, it's not. I enjoyed yesterday's show. I was listening. Yeah. And and then your song All Around the World got stuck in my head and it's, it's been in my head. All around the world just la 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 la. And that Jason Derulo song and stuck in my head. Everybody's singing la 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 la. And yeah. So all around, around the world. Look who just walked in. Hello, my Matthews. Hello, Haley. It's Kelly. It's too hard to get Chef Supervisor. Oh my god. I love dance music. Oh my god, I'm dancing to that right now. Wow, Shelly, you're really dancing to that. That's right, uh -huh. What good radio. That was good. You, I fit the listener in the mind's eye saw Shelly dancing. I hope they saw strobe lights. Look who else walked in. Oh my, this is Floyd the Floorman! And this is John Deere, the engineer. Floyd and I have been to many a dance club. I have some really wicked moves, Haley. Haley, Haley just died. Oh my God. 
I'll give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. It's not working! I'll try harder. Now he's bubbling. That's really bad. Stop! Stop that, John Deere! I think he's alive! You can stop now! Alright. Haley, how do you feel now that you've been resuscitated? What? What'd I miss? There was all kinds of things like this story about Rudyard Kipling. No, that's something I told you before the show. <laughs> but it was fascinating about an old book. No, yeah, um... I found it really fascinating. I was looking through some old books with my mom because there's a lot of books in our house and some of them are very old, like passed on to my mom and dad. And they're really old. They're pretty darn old. My when parents. you touch them, do you feel history? Yes, actually. There's like... There's like a Robert Louis Stevenson uh, Children's Gardens of Verses from 1992... Uh, there's all sorts of, like, Mother Goose stuff from the 30s. Did you say 1992? Sorry, 19, 1902. Whoa! That's, that's a bit of a difference. Yeah, 1902. Um, the one that really struck me, though, is my mom pulled out this Rudyard Kipling. I think it was a first edition printing of The Jungle Book. And, like, alone, that's a really big thing um we're actually considering selling it because it's probably a lot of money and we need to get them out of the house because they're taking up space but anyway um we'll take buyers right now ding 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 ding, ding. or you can just buy your own copy on amazon go to mikesillypodcast.com and use the link yeah because it's money that was a great plug thank you thanks back and to had, my story you did a lot of good singing on the last show too thanks thanks back to my story <laughs> um I'm so fixated with the past. My, uh, my mom opens this book, and she's looking at the copyright. And I, I stop, and I'm like, can I see that? So I take it, and I open it. And on the very first page, it's got the title, The Jumical Book. It's got copyright right below that. Near the bottom of the page is Rudyard Kipling's name, obviously. But immediately above that is a swastika. Whoa. Right. Well, I know I've heard the story, but look at my excitement. It's, Whoa. it's true. The, the copyright date, the print date on that book was like 18, 1899 or 98. Wow. So that predates any like Nazis. Nazi national socialism use of that symbol by at least 20 years. Because that didn't happen until like... Immediately after World War One, which wasn't even s beginning to start at that point. If the little legs uh -huh. of the swastika are pointing in a particular direction, does it mean something if they're reversed? Because I heard that Hitler reversed them, and that meant, like, evil. No. But the other way is okay. The swastika symbol, the cross, the the cross has been used in so many different cultures and religions throughout the years because it's a really common symbol to make uh -huh. but it doesn't particularly matter which way it turns oh. however um, it's a fairly popular um, symbol uh, in religions in the east uh, huh. Chinese religions there's actually one of the oldest uh, uh, one of the oldest Indian religions that I think it's called like Jainism or something oh. like that was a big symbol and they still use it to this day as well as Hindu and such and I think it was flipped from that when uh, Hitler used it okay cause but I'm not entirely sure there was also at Disneyland the uh -huh. canoes mm -hmm. when you got on the little Indian canoes there was a swastika on the front of the canoe and you know They'd always have to explain themselves. Well, this was a symbol that we found this Indian tribe had. Sure it was. But did you I mean, mean it was, but... Did you mean Taoism, the yin-yang? No, no. No. No, I don't think... I don't know if he's using Taoism. Probably, but I know Hinduism, because uh, they have the, the swastika, and then they'll put the dots in each oh. of the four quadrants of it, uh -huh. and then Jainism has it as a symbol of something. I don't remember what it is. It's like the cycle of everything. The circle of life. It's a wheel of fortune. Circle of life, and it moves. 
lose a soul. Welcome to Egotistical Radio Talk. And today we're discussing religion. Religion. Religion is... The opiate of the masses. I disagree. Religion helps me stay stoned. <laughs> what? All right, thank you. That was our... Do you, do you want to hear my, uh, my yes. generic, uh, heavily, um, heavily Jamaican-influenced uh, house song? <laughs> okay, Imperson- sure. Impersonation? Uh-huh. It's, it's like this, so there's like... Ding, 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 ding. And then they get some random guy to come in like, Rastafari! Ding, 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 we live... Ding. Free and happy. No negative vibes on this here track. We gotta live harmony. Marijuana. <laughs> that was amusing to me and everyone. I hope so. That was great. Thank okay, you. Hayley. I have like quite a few examples of the exact same song. <laughs> that, wow. Yeah. One love, one love. Let's get together and feel all right. All right, so thank everybody. Thank- get together, gotta love one another right, right now. now. So I speak with Katie today at the dog park. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of yin and yang going on at dog parks. Some dogs are aggressive, some are happy. But you know what? Actually, oftentimes you see dogs. Living in harmony It's the dog owners That don't live in harmony So yeah. much Sometimes they get like Hey bah! Pick up your dog's Stuff And then there's also The website Mike'sDailyPodcast.com Hey Mike What? Who's Kate? Who's what now? Who's Kate? Who's Kate? Kate Oh Kate Is a lady I met At the dog park uh, We discussed in a previous conversation, uh, Bart, not the Simpsons character, but the you know Bay Area Rapid Transit, she used to take it a lot. And one time she passed out and she woke up and, and all the Bart passengers were helping her. And she was like, that's really weird because you usually get on a Bart and nobody even looks at your face ever. Yeah, but if you passed out, I'd hope someone would notice and take it. Yeah. Them. And then we also, I talked to her, she used to love podcasts, and she was talking about Ira Glass, and I did my Ira Glass impression, which John, my na- my neighbor that likes the show now, that listens to the show that we talked about yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, he liked my Ira Glass impression, because it's kind of like this. This is Ira Glass, today's show, three segments, first act, Haley drinks coffee, second act, Haley talks about Schwarzenegger's third act. Haley's Hitler. And then, that, yeah, so that's how... Oh, uh, you had a better one before. It was lower and more pretentious yeah. radio voice. Oh. Oh. No, that's the only one I know. Maybe... Uh, no, this one time you're doing, like, Ira Glass segment in three parts. <laughs> oh, I think it was a combination Ira- of Ira Glass and Rob Black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the one you like that I do. Yes, I couldn't remember what it All was. Right, I gotta work on that. But anyway, Katie and I have a fascinating conversation. Um, Katie's the daughter of a preacher man. I'm not going to give out the name of the preacher man or the church. But we have had some interesting discussions about my line of work. That was really pretty, what you just did there. I'm the daughter of a preacher man. Oh my God. You went all Dusty Springfield on me. Dusty Springfield. Um... (laughs) Uh, mm, only one who could ever reach me was the daughter of a preacher man. The only one who could ever teach me was the daughter of a preacher man. She was. Was. She was. Was. Ooh, yes, she, she was. was. That's such an awesome song <laughs> that we just butchered. <laughs> No, thank you. Uh, so here she is, Katie. We have a fun time talking. Uh, John really liked our last conversation, so she's back for a two-parter. Wow. 
and we talk about Podcaster Valley. So enjoy, please, and go to our website, mikesdailypodcast.com. You'll find where they listen to the show in a myriad of different places. Mike on Mobile. We're at the dog park right now. It's Mike on Mobile. And oh my gosh, Katie. Hello. How's it going? That, that's Basil barking in the background. And we're at the Podcaster Valley Dog Park. You haven't been on my podcast in a while. I know. It's been a long time, a long absence. I feel like every time I talk specifically, Basil barks. And then when you don't, he doesn't. Try it. Okay, let's see. No, no he's talking. <laughs> yeah, he's barking. He's talking. <laughs> talking to the squirrels in the tree. And how's Mally? Mally's great. She's the best, as you can see. And I want to thank you personally. You know, you become such a good friend. You took care of Mally while I was while I was busy. And she and Basil are now the best of friends. That was so much fun. I walked Mally a couple days. And I didn't tell you the interesting story that happened. Oh my gosh, tell me. So I walked from my house to your house. Okay. Uh, in po- We're both Podcastro Valians. <laughs> Being attacked by flies, by the way, right now in the dog park. Uh, and I'm making sure that this is recording. Just so that I know it's recording. It's recording, okay. <laughs> um, as Basil barks in the background. So I walked to your house and then I uh, walked Mally to the dog park, walked her back, and then I put her back in the in, in your backyard. I leave and this guy comes from across the street and he goes, can I help you? Gosh, I know exactly who it is. Just because it's from immediately across the street, like directly across yeah, yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bob. He's, he's, <laughs> he's very watchful. He's like, what, what are you doing there? What are you doing? And I'm like, uh, I, I was walking Mally. Alley. He's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, he always keeps an eye out on the neighborhood, and he's not shy. You know, I might see someone, sus- I mean, quote unquote, suspicious, someone I don't know on the street, and I would never go talk to them. I'd just watch from inside my window and be like, Mom, there's a person on the street. But Bob will go out and confront. So I- that's good to have a neighbor like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. But sorry, sorry you went through that. Oh, we just got sprayed by Basil. <laughs> Actually, we were just blessed by Basil. That's <laughs> the, that was holy drool. Okay. Uh, he's ordained. And, <laughs> but oh my gosh, he listen to him huffing and puffing. He got excited with the squirrel. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that was fun walking your dog, and then you went. You were at a wedding. Um, yes, my best friend got married. It was it was awesome. And and you posted all these great pictures. What was the wedding like? Um, it was really great. It was really simple. One thing that my friend did really well is she delegated things to people and then she truly delegated it to them. It was like You know, to her friend, I'd like you to do the flowers. And then she just said, you know, do what you... Like, these are flowers I like. This is a style I like. Like, do as you wish. And she did that really with everything. And so... So everyone just felt, you know, it it was very... There was no stress on the day of. She was happy... She wasn't worried about anything because everyone else was taking care of stuff. It was great. Was the bachelorette party interesting? Um, I mean, it was fun. It was a while ago. We did it maybe a month ago, a month before the wedding. Wait, Basil, something to say. <laughs> okay. And it was actually really classy. My friends and I, my, the bride Annie, my best friend, she and our friends, like we don't, we're not really like heavy part, like. When I say we're not heavy party, like we're not partiers at all. We have parties, but it's not like the, the typical, you know, there were no, at the bachelorette party, there were, actually, I forgot to bring all of the alcohol to dinner. We had it at this awesome restaurant called uh, Mission Heirloom in Oakland. Oh. Have you heard of it? No. We're on the restaurant topic again. The talk about food. Woohoo! Welcome to Food Talk. <laughs> food Talk. Um, Let's talk like this, like we're from New York for the rest of the show. <laughs> Friggin' great. I think that was like a Boston. Event. I did. I went past it all of a sudden. <laughs> I can't do East Coast accents. Okay. So, yeah, what is this Oakland restaurant of which you speak? It's called Mission Heirloom, and it's really cool. It's a paleo-style restaurant, and so there's, I don't know even all of that in but I know there's no gluten. My ex-wife's a CrossFit idiot. Is that um, paleo? Like, do they paleo? Yeah, CrossFitters are totally in a okay. paleo. 
Can you, so it's basil. Can you tell me more about, about the paleo oh. diet? Can yes, you, I can tell you more about it. Tell me about it. Um, what it involves, <laughs> I'm doing a horrible job putting the, the, the mic, the mic on mobile in your face, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. What it is, is it's meat. Okay. That makes sense. We're looking back on the menu. It does make sense. And stuff that like cavemen could find and make. Hmm. Okay. And now see what's great about this restaurant is that all of the food is very, very, um, like everything feels like a delicacy or like oh. a, it's all very beautifully presented and very beautifully approached. Like the, so first of all, in the back, the patio area is gorgeous. It's a garden and the whole garden is edible. Wow. And it's flowers and color. It's not just like normal stuff you've seen that you can eat or like vegetables. It's flowers. It's edible, edible kind of garnishes, not necessarily for flavor, but for, but for appearance. And so this is very, very beautiful. And she made, you know, she made like, uh, so I had arranged with the chef before the, before the gathering to um, prepare just like a, a full meal for us with courses. And wow. she did an amazing job. And, um, so it was all, it was, I'm trying to remember exactly kind of the dishes. There was one that was like, a. I think that one will go in the small one, don't you think? I think so. I think Basil, it's a, it's a, a French bulldog. Oh, he, he's fine. <laughs> They always bark when they first come up to the I fence. I know, I know, and Mally likes to do it too now. She and she and Basil have really bonded. They have. Look at that. They've walked trails, yeah. but they haven't gone to paleo restaurants together yet. Oh well, you know what? And I called because I wanted to bring Mally there once, but they don't allow dogs. Oh. I know, and it's the kind of place that you would think would allow dogs. It's very hip, very hip, and very just. There's like a very cool vibe about it. Um, and really not pretentious. It was very, very cool. And the chef, like I said, the chef kind of prepared these different meat-based de- uh, meals. What should we do? Uh, let's see. I think they're being calm. Yeah. They're, I think they can't wait to meet this dog. Yeah. And, and then the dog is walking. There we go. There they go. It's all good. So let me wrap up about this restaurant. I'm talking. Okay, we're wrapping up. So uh, one cool thing that the chef came out and did, which everyone should go to this restaurant. is a very cool experience. If you're paleo or not, I'm not paleo, but all of the food was delicious and really, really flavorful and satisfying. Now, so at first we were kind of all eating the dishes just as they were. And then the chef came out and she said she had a plate of different salts, salts from around the world. And she's, and they're all different colors and different textures. And she said that your body knows the like deficiencies it has and it knows the minerals that it needs or, you know, something to that effect. Uh So she, and she said, she was like, I want you to look at this, you know, all these different salts, just pick the one that you're drawn to and put it on your food and try it. And so every, and it was interesting because everyone was drawn to a different kind of salt. Like I was like, I like, wow. I'd like to have that pink one. And my friend was like, I like the one that's like kind of speckled. And you know, we were really all drawn to different ones and we all loved, you know, it, it turned these meal, these dishes from really good to incredibly great with the salt. I've never heard of this. Yeah, it was very, very cool. I was like, wow, I feel like I just learned something about my body and food, and it was very cool. And and so that's what I mean when I say that it's not pretentious, but it's kind of a cool approach. So Yeah. yeah. And in our own backyard in Oakland. Yes. Well, actually, I think it's in Berkeley. You know, because in Oakland, did I say it was in Oakland? I think I did say it was in Oakland. I think it's in Berkeley. Let's rewind. Uh, Fact check. Where's our fact checker? Like on, do you listen to Screen Junkies? No, what's that? It's a show where they talk about movies. They debate. It's actually, I don't really like it because they always say that the, they have kind of debates about movies and topics about movies. And then one guy's the judge and he like declares a winner. And he says it's based on the arguments, not on the, not on the movie. So like, Uh. They might be debating, oh, who's the best, you know, what's the best movie? Um, 
Twilight or, you know, Indiana Jones. Obviously, Indiana Jones is better. Uh Uh-huh. And so, it's like... Wait, Temple of Doom or (laughs) Raiders of the Lost Ark? Not including Temple of Doom. But... Lost Crusade. (laughs) Junior! (laughs) Junior! Yeah. Um, So, so 